Well, interwebs, this episode of Thursday Things is going to get a little more personal. So today I want to talk about, uh, in a nutshell, the reasons why I'm not going to be getting credentials. Uh, ministerial credentials, that is. Now, you all know if you watch these videos, hopefully you picked up on the fact that I'm not in any way with these videos trying to shame any particular denomination, uh, any particular group of people, or, you know, I do, this is in regards to the Church of America, but I'm not going to, like, name, you know, a denomination, a church, a pastor, a leader of of religious organizations and things like I'm not going to do that uh, I've actually intentionally steered clear of that because I'm not in any way trying to shame individuals or individual organizations although I will tell you that I was in process of getting ministerial credentials with a denomination because that's the only way that you can get ministerial credentials unless you get them through like a specific church which is a non-denominational church but for the majority of like you know the recognized entities out there you have to have credentials through them so I'm not going to name names of the denomination, nor am I going to say anything that is directly condemning to that denomination, as it were, because uh, as you guys know, that's not my way. With that being said, I, I was pursuing getting ministerial credentials through a denomination. Now some of you might be thinking it's quite hypocritical of me, and I, I understand your, your hesitance to accept this, but just hear me out for a second. Part of my reasoning for doing that was because I believe completely that you can't change something from the outside. So just as, like, if you want to change change the political landscape, you need to get involved in politics. If you disagree with where the church as a whole is going, they have to accept you before they'll hear you. Meaning, you can stand outside and throw rocks all you want to, but the people inside are never gonna, they're never gonna feel them. If somebody inside starts throwing rocks, then they're gonna take notice. As long as they have the walls to protect them, you know, from the outside, you can say and do whatever you want. It doesn't make it, it doesn't cause any effect. But whenever it starts happening from the inside, from one that they accept and trust, that, that you've jumped through the hoop so that they can hand you the piece of paper that declares you worthy of being heard, well, then it, then it starts to carry a little bit more weight. My reasoning for seeking out credentials in the first place was basically so that I could be heard, so that the things I've been thinking about for years and seeing wrong in the church would be accepted to be heard. Um, I finished all of the educational portion back in December of last year. There was, there was one other thing that had to get finished up, that took until May, uh, the beginning of May, so that I could actually apply for credentials. For those of you that don't understand how it all works, there's typically at least two, possibly three different levels of minister, and even up to, I think of some, some certain denominations, it actually goes into more than that. I think for the majority, it's it's ordained. Or, or, ordained minister is the highest, and then there's different levels below that. So I was going for the lowest level. I don't have a, a theology degree or anything like that that would let me do the ordained and stuff. So I was having to do classes so that I could get the lowest level of uh, credentials. I applied for the application. So I looked at the application and as I was reading the application, I saw things that were, were stated in a manner that I just, I can't agree with. And it's not even things that like I have a problem with myself like a problem not doing like for example one of the things on the application specifically is it says that you will abstain from smoking tobacco products or other product alcohol and other things that are prohibited in the bible you guys know from these videos that i'm not gonna say that you know drinking is sin and i'm not gonna say that smoking is sin because it doesn't say that in the bible it, it just doesn't. What it, what it is not only saying that I will abstain from it, but in saying that they also have below that is that I will adhere and publicly profess all of the doctrines of this denomination. And every denomination is going to have something similar to this. Well, anybody who watches these videos knows I'm not going to publicly profess that because I'm already publicly professing not that. What they want me to do is sign this, not only saying that I will abstain from it, but that I will publicly profess their doctrines, which means I'm going to sit here and tell, you know, all of you that this is sin, you can't do it, when it's not in the Bible. And no one has ever been able to show me in the Bible where it is. 
that's one thing. The other thing that I'm having a really hard time with is there's a lot of phrasing that I just disagree with. They have what's referred to as truths, which are things that as a religion, as a denomination, have been accepted as being the, the foundational tenets of what they preach and their doctrines and everything. And just that in and of itself, I have I have a serious problem signing off that I agree with these truths because there's nothing to denote, in fact, that they are truth. Because there's certain things, you know, like the, the alcohol and smoking and all that, that they say are, are truth and I completely disagree with. Because it's not in the Bible. It's not, it's not something they can factually say that it is true. You're signing off that you believe and you completely agree that what their interpretation of the Bible is is 100% fact. Even though there's not actual biblical evidence that really backs it up. And I, I went through even this morning and read verse by verse every single thing on this stuff before I even came out to do this recording. And I'm not convinced of the biblical evidence that they provide that it is indeed evidence for what they're claiming. It doesn't line up. It doesn't line up at all. There's that and the fact that they call it truth. There's more. It keeps going. Um, another thing that really bothers me about it is they're really hung up on this idea of divorce. I mean, to the point that on the application, have you or your spouse ever been divorced? Have you or your spouse have a living former spouse? This is my problem with it. So in this, in this denomination, the denominations that follow this, if you've been divorced, period, you cannot be a minister. The end. The only way that you can is if you can prove that basically your spouse cheated on you in some manner or left you for someone else because of sexual reasons which is unbelievably humiliating for somebody to try to prove and relive and all that anyways that's something that really bothers me because again i've never been divorced myself i haven't it's not a problem but they want me to sign off saying that i will publicly uphold their doctrine that i'm going to publicly profess that this is correct that these are truths you know, if somebody got divorced before they even started serving god or somebody was a drug dealer before they started serving god you know whatever it may be like they're a new creature whenever they start serving God. I mean, that's that's what we all say. That's the redemptive power of Christ. That, that's the, the redemption washed clean of the cross and everything. Like, that is what we believe. That's what we profess. I'm not going to be so bold as to say that getting a divorce is sin. There's many different reasons for divorce. It's an individual thing between you, your spouse, and God. Just like everything, I always say, is between you and God. Uh, in the case of divorce, it doesn't it does involve another person. It's that thing of, like, they want me to then go and profess that, you know, if you're divorced, you're not fit for ministry. I don't agree with that. I don't believe it. I believe that God can use anyone. I believe that anybody who has a heart to try to serve God and wants to be in ministry, that God will honor that and use them. And I believe that if we're going to say that, you know, God forgives people and, and everything else, who are we to judge if somebody got divorced for whatever reason? It's none of your business why they got divorced. Honestly, it's none of your business. I cannot in good conscience sign that I'm going to go profess this stuff because as you all know from watching these videos, I'm not. I know some people that have been involved in this particular denomination for a very long time. Going back to the divorce thing, and this is in fitting with typical religiosity, if uh, you have the right family, the divorce thing doesn't matter. Uh, there's a couple of stories I've heard about uh, different districts with and it's all broken up in districts and stuff like a business of course but there's some stories I've heard from different districts about people who had very well connected uh, relatives uncles dads within the group prominent wealthy members of the religion of the organization and they had been divorced you know sometimes upwards two or three times and they go to apply for credentials bam no problem no problem that's one of those cases like like oh well, we talked to the lord and he's okay with it i've personally known someone that was trying to get credentials uh, with this same denomination who had been divorced and the reason why he was divorced is because his, his wife left him to be with a, another woman they denied him credentials for for several, several years. He was the acting pastor of a church and they wouldn't give him credentials, but they, that the members of the church threatened to pull out of the, the denomination. They threatened to go non-denominational to keep him as their pastor. And then they finally conceded and let him have a waiver because his divorce was on the grounds of uh, sexual immorality, basically, is what they went with. Like, that, it, that he had been cheated on, essentially, and that it wasn't his fault. I've had what would be considered good, you know, good Christian people tell me to basically just lie, get through the interview stuff, get the credentials, and do what I want. And I can't sit here weekly and speak against that to, you know, 
I mean, whoever decides to watch these videos and, and then turn around and do it. It's basically like, you know, some of the things, like I was saying, can I adhere to them myself? Yeah, like the abstaining from smoking or whatever. Yeah, I can totally adhere to that myself. But it's the case of they want me to profess and they want me to say that I will tell other people that it's wrong. Do I have any intentions of getting a divorce? No, I, I don't think my wife is either. I think we get along pretty well. You know, what it really is, is when you look at it, it's a culmination of a lot of the things that I have a problem with with the church anyway. The the inequality of different things, rating one thing as being more worse than another, stating that you believe that God can, you know, save and redeem and help and guide and all these things and then not believing it, not actually accepting that it can happen for somebody. The judgmental practices, the fact of, like, you know, there's people that have been divorced that I know personally that had credentials denied to them, but there's other people that have been divorced that because of who their families are, got granted waivers where they could get credentials. The wanting somebody to just align themselves to this this stringent thought process that claims things to be true that can't be proven as being true and might differ, you know, between persons based on personal convictions. What you end up getting is exactly what I was talking about, is a bunch of people that just think alike and then they try to push that on to everybody else, stating it as fact, truths, when they're not. They're unsubstantiated. It basically ended up being a culmination of a lot of the things I've been talking about in one kind of application process. So it looks like I'm not going to be getting credentials because as I thought about it over the last two weeks, I've weighed the evidence at hand with what is being claimed. I've looked at where I stand on, on many issues. These are just a couple I'm talking about. Naming and shaming is not my way. I don't want to do that. That's not my intention. I want everyone to pray and see God and determine between God and themselves where they stand and what is sin and what's not. And I, I have no reason to create any type of, of negative image towards a, a church entity as, as individual and individual a singular church, whatever it may be, is not my intention. So that's why I'm specifically talking about the couple of things I can talk about without you being able to go, oh, it's that denomination. But there are other things beyond this. These are just, these are just a few. And also keep in mind, interwebs, this is what lines up most with what I believe. Like, this is the denomination that lines up closest to what I already believe. And it's so different that I can't in good conscience say that I will uphold it because I disagree with so much. And you might look at that and go, okay, well maybe your beliefs are completely screwed up. And granted, I'll give you that. They very well could be. My beliefs are trying to basically read the Bible and trust God and pray and try to sort out what he wants. And I believe everybody else should be able to do the same and no, no entity should tell people that something is sin unless they know it to be sin. What they're doing is judging unequally, and they're not allowing people to seek a relationship with God on their own because they want you to adhere to their version of it. And in that, I can't, I cannot say to these people, to this entity, that I will uphold their their doctrinal beliefs when I have no intentions of doing so. And then, as you know from these videos, I've already publicly not done so. So interwebs, that's why I'm not going to be getting ministerial credentials, at least for the foreseeable future. I'm going to leave this at that. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, please subscribe if you do like the videos I'm putting out. Hit that like button. Let me know that you enjoy the content that I'm putting out there. I do come out with new videos every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday. If you don't like it or you have any feedback, please feel free to leave me a comment. I'm curious what you all think about my decision. So definitely leave me a comment. Let me know what you think. So interwebs, again, I'm going to leave this at that. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you for your support, and until next time, bye!